Hey everyone, it's so good to be with you tonight. I wish that we could be meeting together uh, as a large group and I'm looking forward to the day when we can do that again. But in the meantime, we're gonna make this work. Um, this week I was meditating on John chapter 14. It's what you will know as the Upper Room Discourse. It is Jesus's last interaction with his disciples before he would go to the cross. And his public ministry is finished and, uh, and in, he is now meeting with his inner circle, so to speak. And these are men that he's walked with for the past three plus years. It's men that he's taught, that he has experienced life with, and, and he's grown close with them. They're, they're particularly fond of him. And, and now he's meeting with them and he's, he's telling them that he's going away and, and where he's going, they, they, they cannot go with him. And, and not only that, he said that there's a traitor um, among them, that one of them who they've been with for, for they've been together all these years, and, and that one of them is a traitor. Can you imagine how that must have made them feel? They're wondering which one of them it could possibly be. And Peter says, well, it's not me, because I would never deny you. And, 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 and Jesus said, Peter, you're right. <laughs> you're not just going to deny me once, you're going to deny me three times. And then he goes on to tell them that, that he's going to be arrested, that he's going to be mocked, he's going to be beaten, he's going to be crucified. Now remember, these were people who were associated with him, and if he's going to be arrested, what, what does that mean for them and their safety? And so can you imagine the turmoil that they must have been feeling? Can you imagine the fear that must have been rising up within them? And it's in that moment that Jesus steps in and he says to them in John chapter 14, verse 1, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. It's interesting that, 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 that it's, it's said in the imperative. In other words, it's a command that Jesus is giving them. He's, he's commanding them not to let their hearts be troubled. That word trouble is interesting. It means to agitate. It, it means to cause one inward commotion, to take away someone's calmness of mind means to disquiet or make restless, means to stir up. It means to strike one's spirit with fear. That was an interesting part of the definition for me, to strike one's spirit with fear. You see, the disciples had, had heard Jesus say this and their spirit be, was struck with fear because of it. They, they became anxious and, and troubled and disquieted within themselves because they didn't know what tomorrow was gonna hold. They didn't know, their, their sense of normal was now shaken. They, they didn't know what tomorrow would bring for them. And as I studied that this week, I thought about you and I and the news that we've had with this COVID-19 and how we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We don't know if we're gonna be on full quarantine. We, we don't know if we're gonna be on lockdown. We, we, we don't know how quickly this virus is gonna spread. We're believing it's not going to in Jesus' name, but, but we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. And, and that is where Jesus stepped in and said, do not let your hearts be troubled. And that's his word for, for us tonight. I, I wonder if you can relate to that. Maybe hey, the last couple of weeks you become troubled over what you're hearing in the news. Maybe some of you are listening and you've been disquieted over an issue going on in your own home or in your marriage. Maybe you're fearful uh, about something. Maybe uh, you're, you're worried about your job being in jeopardy or if there'll be a job for you when you go back. And, Here's God's word for you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Remember, it's a command from Jesus. That tells me it, Jesus never gives a command that he doesn't empower us to, to, to walk out. He says, don't let. That means we have an option here. I can choose to be troubled, to let trouble come into my heart, to let anxiety come into my life, or I can choose to focus on, on what I know about God. Jesus says, here's the solution. Here's the remedy for not letting your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. It's interesting that that word for heart, you've heard me teach on this many, many times. The, the word for heart is your mind, your will, your emotions, your feelings, the passions inside of you. He's saying, don't let those get stirred up. We, we've got to learn to mind our mind, to, to, to think about what we're thinking on. 
because that's what causes us to be disquieted. That's what causes us to have anxiety. Some of you are dealing with anxiety and it's because you're not minding your mind. You're not, you're not focusing on the things above. Instead, you're looking at the things on this earth. You're looking at what's happening in the natural, what's happening in your current circumstances, and it's leading you for, away from a place of peace. The Bible says that we need to take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means I'm minding my mind. I'm not letting it lead me out of a place of peace. If I have a thought that that's causing anxiety within me, I'm going to reach up and keep take it captive. That word captive means to lead it away as a prisoner at spear point. I'm going to take that thought captive. I'm going to make it a prisoner. I'm not going to let it have any real estate in my mind anymore because I know that thinking on that is causing me to become disquieted. It's causing me to have anxiety. It's causing fear to rise up within me. Instead, I'm going to believe in God. That word believe, it means to have faith in, to have total trust in God. Do you have total trust in God? We say we believe in God, but my question for you tonight is, do you believe God? Do you believe that he's still in control? Do you believe that he loves you and that he is never going to leave you or forsake you? He's not about to relax his hold on you. He has you. What's happening in the world today is not taking him by surprise. He is Lord of all. He's Lord of all. But you see, fear and faith, they don't mix. It's like this oil and water uh, that I have with me tonight. Th this red water is symbolic of all of our fear and worry. And when we, fear, when we fill our life up with fear and worry, uh, it, 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 will, it will infiltrate our whole life. But when we add to that, pretend I was dumping this oil in, do you see how it won't mix together? It'll mix for a time, but then eventually that oil will come to the surface. And that's what our, our faith does. You see, faith will overcome all that worry. It will cover over all of our fears, and it'll rise to the surface of our life. Jesus said, here's the solution for being troubled and disquieted. Here's the solution for anxiety. Believe in God. Have total trust in God. Have total trust in the God who's promised to never leave you or forsake you. Many of you uh, know that, that Hebrews 13 is one of my favorite passages. I really love it in the Amplified. It says, For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not. He says it three times. He says it, he repeats it for emphasis so that we really get that he means this. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So we take comfort and we are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? Jesus was saying to his disciples and to, to us, we are to continue to hold on to that confidence, regardless of what would happen in the days to follow and irrespective of the, the feelings that mount up within us. The remedy for troubled hearts is to believe in God to choose to focus on things above and not on the things of, of the earth, not on the things that are happening around us in the natural. The way of escape is to believe God, to believe that he's able, to believe that he will not forsake us, to believe that he's all powerful, that he's Lord of all, and that he is still very much in control. We've got to choose. Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. That tells me I have an option. I can let them continue to be troubled. I can let anxiety continue to rule in me. I can let fear mount up within me. I have a choice. But my other option is to believe in God, to set my mind on things above. It's interesting, the tense of the word believe that Jesus uses there has the nuance of a continuing activity. That, that means that I need to choose it daily 
over and over, minute by minute, to set my mind on things above. That when that thought tries to creep in that's going to bring me fear and anxiety, I have to take it captive. I have to, that word, take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. Well, when the Word of God says that, it means to, to make it a prisoner, to lead it by spear point away. It means if I'm thinking on something that's causing me to have anxiety or fear, I need to say that is not of the Lord. And I need to choose to take it captive to the obedience of Christ and, and replace it with the truth of what God says. God says he's not given me a spirit of fear. He's given me a sound mind. He's given me a spirit of power. But it all goes back to our thinking. We have to think the way he thinks. Romans 12, 2 says that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We were transformed. When, when Jesus uh, went to the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John in Matthew 17, it's interesting, the word says that he was transformed before them, uh, that his clothing became white as light and, and that his face shone like the sun. He was transfigured before them. It's interesting to me that that word transfigured is the same word that's used in Romans 12 too for transformed. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We get transfigured by, by, by renewing our mind. And what that means to me is, is, Bill Johnson says this, the renewed mind reflects the reality of another world. Just like Jesus, when he was transfigured in front of his disciples, he reflected the reality of another world, a heavenly world. And you and I are called to not have a, our thinking process the way the world has it, to not think the same way they think, that we should be transfigured in front of people, that they, they, they should say, why aren't they having anxiety in this time of, uh, of need? Why aren't they walking in fear when everybody around them is walking in fear? Because we're transfigured, because our mind is set on another reality, a heavenly reality. And we are manifesting that in this world, but we have to choose to think differently. We can't think like the unbeliever down the street. We need to think and set our mind on things above. There's a constant battle going on for our mind. Joyce Meyer said the battlefield is always in the mind because the enemy knows that where the mind goes, the man will follow. That that mind has the power to, to disquiet us within ourselves, to cause us to be restless, to, to cause us to be fill, filled with fear and anxiety. And so we must learn to mind our mind. We must learn to not let our hearts be troubled. We have to take responsibility for it. Jesus is saying that. The opposite of, of faith is fear. And we have to choose to take all of that fear and override it with faith. And let that faith come to the surface and begin it, to rule and reign in our life. I'm so glad that you joined us tonight. Meditate on the scripture is pretty powerful. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He has this. Over and over in the rest of chapter 14, we see Jesus talking about his relationship with the Father. And, and it's that relationship that everything goes back to in his life. And I read an, uh, a quote this week by um, Grace Stedman that was really quite powerful. And I want to just end it and leave, leave you with that quote. He says... Jesus in verse 20 says, in that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Jesus was saying the relationship which I have with the Father is the pattern which I have with you. Just as I live by means of the Father at work in me, so you will live by means of me at work in you. I will come to you, I will live in you, I will work through you. And you can face every problem of life on that basis. I will be adequate to handle anything that comes your way on that basis. Whatever life throws at you, whatever fear, whatever upset, whatever discouragement, whatever disappointment, whatever its nature may be, you can handle it in that same way that I have handled my life. You and me, I and you, the Father is in me, and I am in him. It's all about that relationship. Ray Steadman was saying, whatever we face in life, we can face knowing he is in me. 
he is in me, I am in him, what do we have to fear? What can life throw at us? Because the power of God is at work within us. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you next week.